Hello and welcome back to the logic of HPD. Uh, this set of slides is about the law of total variance. So this is about analyzing variance explained, which is important in concepts like heritability, which is basically just the variance explained of genetics in a trait. And so this gives you a general law for variance explained. Um, anytime you can have conditional variance, so like the variance of y given x, um, even if it's not in a linear regression equation, but to motivate the law of total variance, consider a regression equation like y equals beta x plus an error term. So y is linear in x, and so the expectation of y really does go up linearly with x, you can analyze the variance of y using basic variance rules by saying that the variance of y equals the variance of beta x plus uh, epsilon. And then assuming no covariance between epsilon and x, um, you can say that it's the variance of beta x plus the variance of the error, which means beta x is the expectation function, essentially. So we've just assumed that the data is centered and so that uh, where the expected value of the error is zero. And so then beta x just becomes the expectation function. And so that's just the variance of the expectation function, which is basically just the line, plus the variance of the error around the line, which can also be thought of as the variance of y given x. So when you know x, y has a lesser variance. and so. We can draw this. Let me go ahead and, and draw this so you can see what I'm talking about here. So you have x and y, and you have the data maybe. You just draw like a lot of data here. And you have the regression line. So the whole variance of y, we're breaking up the variance of y, and that's like looking from here all the way down to here. So you can imagine like collapsing all of this data that spans along, along x onto the y-axis, making it uh, unidimensional. So we can draw it like that there, and then you can just take the variance of that. So what we're doing is we're saying, well, the line has a variance. So beta x, basically. Which is just the line. So that's like, um, that's equal to beta squared times the variance of x. So it's like taking the variance of x and then scaling it by the factor of the line. So this, this is like the variance of beta x. Imagine taking the variance of the line, basically. It's just the variance. So that's like the variance explained of y by x, which is basically just another way of saying just the variance of x, right? Because you see y varies along x. And so that's part, like part, like part of this variance is explained by how the expectation goes up with x. But then if you hold x constant, you get less variance, right? So say you hold x constant in the middle here, you have the same mean as the total distribution, but you get less variance. You have less spread around the line. And so this is the variance of eta or the variance, the variance of y given x, basically. 
So this is saying that uh, that variance, the variance around the line basically, plus the variance through the line, actually equals the total variance of y. And so basically this, this the variance of the error is the non-explained variance, the variance you can't predict with x, and the variance explained by x is the variance of the expected value of y given x, or the variance of x basically just scaled onto y with beta. And so this is in a clean linear regression but it turns out that this is true anytime you have a uh, expectation function of y given x. It does not have to actually be linear. So for example, you could have something like this. Um, where it's kind of like, let me see. It's not a straight line. But you can clearly see that as x goes up, the expected value of y given x goes up. So maybe it equals, this looks kind of weird, but maybe it's like x cubed or something like that. So you can still basically, so in this case, from the law of total variance, we know that it's still basically, the variance of y is still basically the variance of like x cubed, whatever the expectation function is. Or no, right? If it's the expectation function, it wouldn't be plus the error. The error would go away. Right, so it would be like y equals x cubed plus an error, but then it would just be the expectation function, the expected value of y given x would be like x cubed plus a mean or whatever, plus like the offset before when x is zero. Um, But basically what this is saying is that you still have like a little bit of spread along this line. So you can just take the variance of x and then map it onto y with the line. And that's part of the variance. It's the variance explained, even if the, the, like the quote unquote line is not linear. And then there's still going to be some spread around the line for any x. And then that's, that's the rest of it. That's the variance. That's the variance of y given x basically. And the law goes further than that, as we'll see here in a second. You might say that it's not homoscedastic, meaning the variance of y given x is not the same for every x. So the spread actually increases a ton. Maybe it's like really small down there, and then it just keeps getting bigger. Right, until the line is just not very predictive anymore. Then you just take the expectation. The variance of y is still the variance of the trend. Basically, the expectation function of y plus of y given x plus the expected value of the spread around the line, the expected value of the variance of y given x, basically. So sometimes it's really little. Sometimes it's really big. In the middle, it's maybe here. And that comes out to a number. So let's uh, change slides here. And so this is the law of total variance, basically, that the variance of y equals the variance of the expected value of y given x plus the expected value of the variance of y given x. And so as I showed, you can visualize that in linear regression. If the linear regression is standard and homoscedastic, then the variance of y given x is constant. So taking the expectation is not necessary. 
but basically for any time you have an expectation function y given x, you can break down the variance like this, and that is the law of total variance. So it's pretty simple to understand. This is useful in analysis of variance, multiple regression, heritability, all of that. And so now I will give the general proof for this statement showing that it does not depend on the expectation function of y given x being linear. So basically you start with the variance of y, which as you can recall, it's just the expected value of y squared minus the square of the mean of y. So you just have a random variable y. And then you assume that you have an expectation, you have another variable x where there's an expectation function defined for it. So if you have the expected value of y squared given x, then you can change the expected value of y squared into this basically. And this comes from the law of total expectation. So the, ex the expected value of the expected value of y squared given x is just the expected value of y squared. So you should recall that from the law of total expectation. And this furthermore can be split up into the variance of y given x plus the, exp uh, the expected value of y given x squared. And this transformation from this to this follows from the fact that the variance of y given x from the definition of variance is just the expected value of y squared given x minus the expected value of y squared given x squared. So you just move this basically to the other side and then you get that equality. So now you just um, go back to the original statement and fill in this for the expected value of y squared. So we showed this is equal to that. And then for the other one, the expected value of the mean of y squared, you just again apply the law of total expectation and note that that's the, the square of the expected value of the expected value of y given x. And so then you use the linearity of expectation to actually split these up and so you group this part over here with that and then over here you actually have the expected value of the variance of y given x which as we remember was in the law so now we have one part of the law right this part we've shown that you can derive this part of it from this logic and so this, should, this over here should actually be the variance of the expected value of y given x to fulfill the law. Should be the first part. And we see that that is the case since this is, in fact, uh, the expected value of the expected value of y given x squared minus the uh, the square of the expected value of the expected value of y given x. So from the definition of variance, that's equal to the variance of the expected value of y given x. So that gives the law of total expectation. Or the law of total variance, my bad, I misspoke. That gives, that gives the law of total variance. So pretty basic proof in the intuition from linear regression is probably enough because usually you're doing linear regression. So one place, so to end off, I'll give one place where I recently found that this was useful. So I was given from Walsh and Lynch 2018 that the definition of FST, if you have say an allele and you have like uh, maybe three different populations that are separate and maybe in one population uh, a type of allele occurs with a frequency of 60% and another it's 50% and in another maybe it's only 30%. So you have an overall, and say the populations are of like equal size, right? 
So you can pull the populations together and get the variance of that allele. And in this case, it would be, uh, if you take the all, overall mean, it would occur be, uh, between all populations if they're like, or within the total population, if these subgroups are all of equal size, it would occur at a rate of like 42 or 46.2%. And so the variance of, of that would ultimately be, since it's a Bernoulli variable, it would be um, just P times Q. So the variance would just be 0 0.462 times one minus 0.462, which should be about uh, 0 0.5, 0.538, which comes out to 0.248, okay? And then, so that's the overall variance of the allele. So then there's also a variance of the expected value of the allele, and that's just the deviance from the mean of all the populations, basically. So. So this is just basically the So basically it's just the variance of, of these. So just the amount that each of these deviate from this squared, the mean amount of that, and that actually comes out to about 0.015 or 1.5%. And so then the FST would just be 0.015 over 0.248, which is 6% in this, in this example, because the FST is basically the expected value of, or no, the variance of the expected value of the genes given the population or the race over the expected value of the genes, or no, over the total variance of the genes. Yeah, so this, so this is the FST. So let me clean this up here. So we can use the law of total variance to show that this is actually equal to the R squared of the regression of race onto genes. So from the from the law of let me see from the law of total expectation which is this we also get this that 1 equals the FST value here plus this like standardized variance of g given r and if you recall from the last part of the linear regression slides this is the same as basically the R squared. This, this here is the R squared, so the FST equals the R squared. So for just a refresher, it's like, basically if you have, you standardize genes so that it has a variance of one you know that, and then you do the same for race. And then you take the variance of both sides. You know, one equals R squared times one plus the variance of that. But this is the same thing as the expected value of genes given race. So this R squared basically is that standardized variance of the expected value of genes given race. So basically if you just correlate race, like a race fixed effects thing, population one, two, you know, and so on with genes, it'll have a certain variance explained, and that's the FST. So the FST is just how much variance race explains of like allele distributions.